Hello, everybody, and welcome to What Culture for your lovely news roundup with me, Ash Millman, and also Adam Cleary and Kirsten as well. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Hello. welcome. Hello. We've got a three-person news today, which is particularly exciting because we've got three lovely stories for you as well. So I'm going to be talking to you about Star Wars having a brand new direction and a new series that they're releasing. And Adam, what are you going to talk to us about? Uh, Tom Holland's done some funny Spider-Man stuff, so I'll be delving right into that. Ooh. And Kirsten? I shall be talking about a brand new series of Westworld that has been announced. Hey, so we've got loads of lovely new stuff today. Um, so to just jump right in with uh, our great thumbnail, which I'm sure you've seen by now. Um, we're talking about uh, the new Star. Sorry, we've seen we've just seen the Ewok version of this. It's really funny. So um, the new Star Wars series that's coming is coming from the Russian Doll co-creator um, Leslie Headland, and is going to be female centric, which. It's, it's particularly exciting because we've had so many strong female characters in Star Wars that I think it makes sense for them to have one led um, in this sort of way as well. And it's going to be in a separate timeline, away from all the main stuff, so it's its own self-contained sort of project. There's nothing on the plot or really the story so far apart from it contains martial arts concepts. So it's going to have a, b <laughs> a, bit, of, a bit of martial arts. Yeah, it, all, all I found on it was that it incorporates martial arts elements. So we're going to have some high kicking chopping like martial arts wielding female badasses in a new star wars series so that comes alongside uh, mandalorian season three that's coming out cassian and or obi-wan kenobi things are all coming out so there's loads going on with star wars at the moment how do you guys feel about a new series and a female centric one at that mm, yeah i think it's uh, a new series would be good i'm guessing that's um gonna be sort of similar to the like the mandalorian i'm guessing um, yeah another live action one yeah yeah so yeah i think that'd be good i mean i think the, like having a female sort of front man would be nice because I think even though we had obviously Ray, I wasn't too big of a fan of the character my, like herself. Um, I, mm. I don't know why. I just it, she just just didn't tickle me the right way. Um, but yeah, having some sort of like badass martial arts like. But yeah, that'd be really cool. I'm, I'm very intrigued as to how that would work and t as to who she might be. I really like mm. the idea that somewhere at Disney HQ, they've just got a whiteboard that just says, women, Star Wars, ninja stars, and nobody <laughs> suggested it's just like Space Charlie's <laughs> Angels yet. Yeah, absolutely. It, no, it's, it sounds, it's just a, a great idea. That it comes from um, Leslie Headland as well is exciting. Like I mentioned Russian Doll is what she's done before. She's co-creator of that, um, which is about a game developer called Nadia who gets stuck in a time loop and uh, she keeps dying and coming back to life on her birthday, which is a very happy death day, um, the series. And um, that was great fun. It was nominated for 13 Emmys. It won three of them, has Natasha Leon as the star, who is a wonder. So if we get Natasha Leon in the Star Wars universe, that would also be fantastic. I just think it's a nice idea. I think more Star Wars content. Star Wars is the never-ending franchise. It is the never-ending series of, of stuff. So for more galaxies far, far away and more timelines, more stuff to appear in it, I think there's so much room for different concepts, fun stuff. And yeah, martial, art, martial arts elements, female-centric <laughs> Star Wars is absolutely my jam 100%. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah. That's that's the, basically the Star Wars news, what we're getting. <laughs> well, I obviously have a little bit of Westworld coming your way. So we have been, mm -hmm. there's been rumours going, well, not, not rumours, it's been kind of announced that there's going to be a season four of Ooh. Westworld. And what's interesting is that Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan, who are two of the main characters in Westworld that have been in it continuously, um, have actually been put down within their contract to do up to six seasons of Westworld. So we, Ooh. there's a lot planned, <laughs> obviously, for them, but that, that's all we seem to sort of know. We don't really know the direction as to where it's going or what it's going to be about. Um, the first series of Westworld obviously took with took place within Westworld. Um, it was like a Western sort of um, vibe going on with cowboys and Indians, and and it was really really good. I, I watched the first series; it was um, it was fantastic. Um, the second series, they kind of start to become self aware because it's all um, these sort of android kind of humanoid beings that are created, and they can be killed off or you know 
copulated Ooh. with. <laughs> um, copulated? Copulated? <laughs> I, I, I'm not, that was so I, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure what I'm allowed to say on the internet, okay? So, um, yes, so there's many things that you can do with them, and then once they do die, they can just kind of come back, but they start be kind of becoming self-aware that they they kind of start getting memories of their previous lives and this has been going on for many many years obviously it's all taking place in the future um and westworld isn't the only world there is many many others of different themes and genres and stuff that you can go into and it costs a lot of money but it's like a it's like a video game almost that you that you live in um in real life um and the second series i got halfway through um didn't properly finish it but they kind of start rebelling and the third season has just kind of started to get started um i've recently found out that aaron paul mm. is in it which i was not aware of so i might actually have to dig back <laughs> in because i love aaron paul um but yeah we um that's all that sort of we know i think at this point in time season three is taking place in this futuristic metropolis which is supposed to be like the real world um but i'm pretty sure the yeah. androids have kind of invaded that space um so mm. yeah so i i mean again i don't know how they're going to finish series three and what is in store but six seasons is um feels like a lot a hell of a lot yeah. of westworld to get through you'd think they'd have like some serious plans for the different yes. worlds and stuff they exactly. can look at like you say with all the different things um i saw season one and i've been meaning to catch up on it for ages mm. but i loved westworld the first season and i've had it on my list for so long to catch up with it to know there's going to be so much more is again another really lovely thing it's just mm. loads of lovely I have, to, I, have, I have to hold my hands up here westworld has been like third or fourth on my you must watch this list mm. for about three years and i just keep putting things in above it and i never quite Get right. it's, it's going to become my new Game of Thrones, I think, and I wait mm. and I wait and I wait, and then there's somehow like ten years worth of it, and I have to catch up all in one <laughs> long, horrible, bleary-eyed winter. <laughs> yeah. But the concept of it, I've always, always really liked, just not enough to watch it yet. So if mm. they're going to run for six seasons, there's obviously a lot of faith in it that the story's going to hold up. So could be good. Hey, all the more to catch up with. It's big yes. binge watch territory if you get to six oh, I seasons. I, in can't. It. I just I can't face sitting and watching six seasons of another show again after <laughs> I had to sit through all the office <laughs> patter about Game of Thrones for two years and then get all caught up with it just in time for season seven. But anyway, that's my life choices out the window. Um, Jimmy Kimmel. We all like Jimmy Kimmel. He does a good show. He's been doing a good show from home and much as we are doing now, being joined by people live across the magic of the internet. And live on the show last night as a surprise was Tom Holland, who you may remember from Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2 and also turning to dust in the Avengers film. Now, um... Spoilers! Spoilers. Spoilers. Don't bring it up, I'll cry again. Whoa! Oh. My bad, my bad. Um, there's a bit of dust in your eye, possibly as if someone has disintegrated. Um, just a body just a Aside here, Tom Holland uh, had a live studio audience in his flat last night for his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel. And as somebody who genuinely sat down once with a pen and pad and tried to work out when he lived in London, how much money he would have to make to be able to live on his own, I cannot tell you how heartened I am to see multi-millionaire Tom Holland still in a four-person share in London. There is truly no hope Aww. for anybody down there. But anyway, <laughs> as fun as this was, he dressed up as one of the old Spider-Man costumes, the little homemade, Aww. like, improvised jumper, hoodie, <laughs> backpack Spider-Man costume. As a little treat to Jimmy, which was quite funny. He was asked where the actual Spider-Man costume was, and unbelievably, Marvel don't let him keep it in oh, the house. That's so mean. Oh, I could believe that. With the way Tom Holland is, like, it would... It would He'd go to the shops in it. He would wear that everywhere. Yeah. However, there was a bit of interesting oh, news no. on this because he was asked when they're going to start filming Spider-Man 3. You may be aware they were supposed to be starting to film it in July of this year. Quite where it's going to fit in the MCU, where it's going to fit in the Sonyverse, we don't still know yet at all up in the air. But they were going to start shooting what he calls a great script in July. He was asked, were well, they still planning on doing that? And in the most if anybody ever asks you this, Tom, make sure you say you don't know answer. <laughs> Tom Holland went, oh, we're going to... I, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of uh, <laughs> up in the air a minute. You could see he knows in his head, but he's had Aww. it drilled into him by some producer. Do not, under any circumstances, <laughs> reveal when you were going to start filming this. He got dead Bless excited. Him. He's like, oh, uh, uh, you know... Um, uh, That's I, the I, thing, I though, with Tom Holland. He's so passionate Aww. with the whole... with everything that he does. And he just... He just wants to tell everyone because he's obviously so excited, but he's given things away so many times that they've obviously... I think even there was one interview where he had to have... 
he had to be accompanied by Benedict Cumberbatch because they were so scared <laughs> yeah. that he was going to give something. And every time he said something, Benedict was like, <laughs> stop, 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 stop talking, stop talking. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's adorable. I love him. They started turning so it into cute. a gimmick at one point, he's didn't so they? Where like he accidentally revealed the title of Far From Home, like in a very deliberate, like, oh, I'm not supposed to be showing this. Kind yeah. of thing. I I love I love when people turn their <laughs> genuine character flaws into marketable assets. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I have got another bit, another fun bit of news for you if you want it. Invo- it involves a little bit Ooh. of creative imagineering, though. Um, A20- A24, okay. the auction site, have come into a load of exciting new movie props, and they're going to do a huge, 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 huge auction for like some stuff like. Wait. And you call A24 the auction site? Do you know what I mean? The movie production well, in, studio. In Moonlight, everybody's got a side hustle. They're, <laughs> they're releasing loads and loads of stuff. They've got um, some stuff from Midsummer. They've got some stuff from Euphoria. They've got some stuff from Uncut Gems, which you'd like to get your hands on. Now, I was very kindly invited down to the auction house's big thing in London, where they had like stuff from loads of sci-fi films, Alien, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, things like that. So I'm going to ask you two, if you could have one movie prop ever, what would you want? <laughs> what do you think, Kirsten? I'll let you that know. was just about to hand off there. Um, oh man, I don't know. I mean, there's so many, but I mean, uh, I mean, definitely something from like a horror movie. I think would be like really cool. Part of me would want to say sort of like Annabelle or something, but then the other part of me is like, are you sh- stupid? Why would you want that in your house? Um, but yeah, I, I, I am that know. part of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you want that? No, she's a bit too scary for me. Um, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Definitely something horror related, but then there's there's that sort of little thing in my head where I know that a lot of horror movies kind of have like bad luck kind of charms a- attached Ooh, to them. And I'm like, yeah. mm, don't think I want that. No, I'm stumped. I really don't know. I, I think I'll definitely have to go with maybe, uh, actually, you know what? I don't, I'm, I'm guessing you guys must have seen this, but in Insidious, um, I think in each of yeah. them, but some of the really cool, um, uh, gadgets that they use to hunt the the ghosts, like Specs has those really mm. cool Specs, which is why it's called Specs. But the gas mask that um, I can't even remember her name um, that the old lady wears when she does her seances, that would yeah. be cool. Like I would, I would just wear that for like mm. randomly. Like I just, I would just join the yeah. chat and be like, today on what culture? Kirsten, you can have <laughs> the Millennium Falcon in your garage, and you want a gas mask. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank back. you, Ash. It's that's a that's horror nerd awesome thing. That is that a wholesome you. choice? I think um, for me, on like in horror terms, because they are selling the mm. midsummer <gasps> flower dress and like the, all the midsummer stuff, absolutely the yes. May Queen get up. I would wear that around my house. <laughs> this all is the honestly, time. this is this is genuine. Um, like the... you've just taken two small children into the world's biggest Toys R Us <laughs> and said you can have any one toy in the shop, and they both come back with packets of gum. Like, <laughs> but it's good big. gum. It'd be great. I I think I would absolutely rock the dress. I'm not. All I'm saying is I'm all about that that flower dress. Either that or the necro. Yeah. Oh, that's a show, um, that's a show like from yeah. that, that that obviously mm-hmm. would be perfect, wouldn't it? I've got like a little like card with the Necronomicon face on at the moment. If I could put like the real book like in place of it on uh, on my shelf, that would be great. Um, other than that, also also big shout out to the bejeweled Furby <laughs> from Uncut Gems. I was going to say, those would be my, I was going to say the bejeweled Furby <laughs> from Uncut Gems. Oh. Yeah. I really wanted when I saw the original prop thing uh, when we went down. They had a uh, Han Solo's jacket there, like the actual. Mm. Um, the original mm. warning war in like all three films and I was like oh I'd love to have that then I realised it would look huge on me because Harrison Ford is a strapping <laughs> man yeah. I would bid a million dollars for this jacket and never be able to wear it so yeah, there you go no, but yeah. you can look at it longingly at least you feel of it you could just stroke it and just ah. Oh, yeah but that's um, what I want the fear yeah. before I can look at that longingly <laughs> and stroke that and it's not going to make me look like I've just been like rescued in some crisis relief thing. I don't know, would it though? <laughs> Sitting with a bejeweled th- Furby. Look, right, I could honestly, <laughs> right there on the set, from there's, 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 there's a spot for a bejeweled Furby. I'm keeping it warm. Okay. Good. Excellent. Well, thank you guys and thank you for that lovely little movie prop moment. Um, that has been the news. That has been our lovely news. What movie prop would you most want to buy? Please let us know in the comments section below um, and just let us know what you think about female-centric Star Wars, about Westworld, about Spider-Man, all the fun things coming to a screen near you sometime soon. But yeah, as for now, I've been Ash. You can catch me on Twitter at Ash Millman. This has been Kirsten. <laughs> yes, you can catch at me on Kirsten Rhea with two A's. Lovely. And also Adam Hello. has been here as well. Where can you, where uh, can you find Adam, you? Can you see L-E-L-Y. 
Wonderful. And you can find us at What Culture at What Culture. And that's it. Hope to see you again soon. We'll do some more news, more lovely things coming your way on the channel. So stay tuned. Bye. Bye. Bye.